Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us today as we discuss Healthy Sleep Habits, brought to you by the State of Ohio's Take Charge Live Well program. We all seem to want more sleep, but how do we make that happen? Sleep seems to be the first thing people cut down on when life starts to get busy and stressful. Just because getting the right amount of sleep can be more involved than counting sheep, it doesn't mean it has to be difficult. This presentation will give you the tools to develop better sleep habits by providing the quick and easy ABCs on getting more Zs. Today we're going to review national sleep data, types of sleep, the effects of sleep deprivation, tips for better sleep, and resources available to help from the Take Charge Live Well program. While we all know of people, maybe even ourselves, who don't seem to get enough sleep, here are some statistics to help illustrate just how big of a problem this is in the United States. According to data from the National Health Interview Survey, nearly 30% of adults reported an average of six or less hours of sleep per day in 2005 to 2007. Furthermore, the National Department of Transportation estimates that drowsy driving is responsible for 1,550 fatalities and 40,000 non-fatal injuries each year in the United States. In fact, according to the National Sleep Foundation's Sleep in America poll, 60% of Americans have driven while feeling sleepy, and 37% admit to actually having fallen asleep at the wheel in the past year. And finally, chronic sleep loss or sleep disorders may affect as many as 70 million Americans. This number is hard to pinpoint, as many people may not necessarily know that they have a sleep disorder. These disorders could result in an annual cost of $16 billion in health care expenses and $50 billion in lost productivity. What this boils down to is that lost sleep equals a loss of productivity. While you sleep, your brain goes through natural cycles of activity, consisting of two basic categories, rapid eye movement sleep, or REM, and non-rapid eye movement sleep, or NREM, or non-REM sleep. Non-rapid eye movement sleep consists of four stages. While you are sleeping, your body undergoes cycles between REM and non-REM. The sleep cycle typically begins with a period of non-REM, followed by a very short period of REM sleep which is when dreams primarily occur. Intense dreaming occurs during this time as heightened brain activity and usually occurs 90 minutes after you fall asleep. The first period of REM typically lasts for 10 minutes with each recurring REM stage lengthening before the final one may last up to an hour. Now it should come as no surprise that the percentage of REM sleep is highest during infancy and early childhood. To illustrate the comparison, Infants can spend up to 50% of their sleep in the REM stage, whereas adults spend only about 20% in REM. Now, we mentioned that non-REM sleep is made up of four stages. Each of these can last anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes in length. A completed cycle of sleep is made up of stages 1 through 4 before REM sleep is attained. Then the cycle starts over again. During stage 1 of non-REM sleep, the eyes are closed. One could be awakened relatively easily during this stage. However, a person may feel as if they had not slept at all if woken during this time. This stage could last for five to 10 minutes. It is common to notice the feeling of falling during this stage, which could also cause a sudden muscle contraction. Stage two of non-REM sleep is a period of light sleep during which there are intermittent peaks and valleys of spontaneous periods of muscle tone mixed with muscle relaxation. During this time, the heart rate slows and body temperature decreases as well. The body prepares to enter deep sleep during this stage. Finally, stages three and four. These are deep sleep stages, with stage four being the most intense. If woken from sleep during these stages, a person may feel disoriented for a few minutes. During this time, the body is repairing and regenerating tissues, building bone and muscles, and it even appears to strengthen the immune system. As many of us can attest to, you sleep more likely as you get older and get less deep sleep overall. Aging is also associated with shorter time spans of sleep. As you are probably aware, sleep plays a pivotal role in your overall health and well-being. However, the magnitude of its effects may surprise you. Here we have displayed some of the major categories within the mind and body that are affected by sleep. First is learning and creating memories and new insights. While you sleep, your brain is hard at work forming the necessary pathways for learning and creating memories 
and new insights. During the night, the sleep cycles that we just mentioned play a major role in grouping and storing memories in your mind. Through proper sleep, you can remember what you learned and experienced during the day. Similarly, sleep is very important in maintaining high levels of focus and responsiveness, especially the rate of response. And as most of us can attest to, sleep also helps with stabilizing and maintaining optimal mood levels. When you feel your best physically, your mood will often follow. Next, sleep is important for proper functioning of the immune system. Getting an appropriate amount of sleep each night can help keep our immune system primed for attack and keep infections at bay. While we sleep, our bodies repair itself and revitalize its organs and muscles. Sleep can not only affect if we come down with an infection, cold or flu, but it can also influence how we fight an illness if we do come down with something. For example, our bodies fight infection with fevers, and when we sleep, we get a better fever response. People who get adequate sleep are also shown to have stronger protections from some vaccinations, such as the flu vaccine as well. Research also suggests that those who maintain healthy sleep habits have an easier time recovering from temporary sleep deprivation than those who consistently get less optimal levels of sleep each night. It's not just the mind that sleep affects, but the body as well. Sleep promotes a decrease in stress hormones and aids in weight management. It also affects blood sugar regulation. In fact, poor, poor blood sugar regulation has been linked with excess weight and diabetes. Getting a proper amount of sleep each night leaves you more likely to maintain a healthy weight overall. Finally, sleep gives your heart and vascular system a much needed rest. According to the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, during non-REM sleep, your heart rate and blood pressure progressively slow as you enter deeper sleep. During REM sleep, your heart and breathing rates can rise and fall in response to your dreams. These changes in blood pressure, heart rate, and breathing rates appear to promote good cardiovascular health. And we'll talk in more detail about the effects of sleep deprivation over the next few slides. So now that you know a little about sleep effects on the mind and body, you may be wondering if you're getting enough yourself. Here we have listed a general set of guidelines. As you can see, sleep guidelines vary as we age. However, there is no magic number, as individual sleep needs can vary based on a variety of factors. Most adults need about seven to eight hours of sleep per night. The amount of sleep that a person needs also may increase based on how sleep deprived they are. People do not seem to grow accustomed to or adapt to getting less sleep than they need. In knowing sleep effects on the mind and body, as well as the general guidelines for sleep recommendations, we can now discuss the consequences of too little sleep. First, getting too little sleep each night can make you more likely to suffer from impaired memory and thought processes, thus making it more difficult to focus each day. Without the proper amount of sleep, your brain has a harder time forming and maintaining the necessary cognitive pathways that aid in creating memories, thought processes, focusing, learning, and reasoning skills. There is also a complex relationship between sleep and depression. We have learned that healthy sleep habits can aid in mood levels and the regulation of certain hormone levels. Poor or little sleep has long been said to be a symptom of depression. In the Sleep in America poll from 2005, people who were diagnosed with depression or anxiety were more likely to sleep less than six hours a night. If you recall from the previous slide, the recommendation for most adults is seven to eight hours per night. In the 2007 study, a sample of 10,000 people showed that those suffering from insomnia were five times as likely to develop depression as those without insomnia. A lack of sleep can even enhance the symptoms of depression and vice versa. Depression can make it more difficult to fall asleep. However, on a positive note, treating sleep problems and or reversing unhealthy sleep habits can help with the symptoms of depression. In fact, recent research actually suggests that symptoms of depression may decrease once sleep apnea has been treated effectively and adequate amounts of sleep have been achieved. We also discussed sleep effects on maintaining a strong immune system. Without enough sleep, the strength of the immune system function and response will obviously be suppressed. Our immune system is designed to protect us from ailments, including colds and the flu. When it is not functioning properly, then our body's ability to fight infection is decreased resulting in more sick days. As we mentioned previously, our bodies fight infections with fevers, which rise at night. 
So if we aren't sleeping, then the fever reaction is not at its peak level of performance, so its ability to fight infection is not as strong. This next one should come as no surprise. A lack of sleep can obviously cause us to feel sluggish and fatigued throughout the day as well, both mentally and physically. Another potentially surprising effect of sleep deprivation is a possibility for increased feeling of pain. While we sleep, our brains are not only maintaining cognitive pathways, but also nerve pathways. Depriving ourselves of sleep can increase the perception of pain. Sleep deprivation can also magnify alcohol's effects on the body. In such, someone who is overly fatigued or tired can become much more impaired than a well-rested person. Now, the last three bullets are all interrelated. You may not realize it, but your sleep habits can be associated with other areas of your physical health, including physical activity, diet, and obesity. Short sleep duration can lead to decreased physical activity levels as a lack of sleep causes increased fatigue. Short sleep durations can also lead to increased caloric intake as a lack of sleep alters hormones that regulate hunger sensation as well as some reasoning skills. Our next slide illustrates sleep effects on these a little bit more in depth. Short sleep duration is associated with increased risk of excess weight and the future risk of developing obesity. People with five or less hours of sleep each night have been found to be 50% more likely to be obese than those who get seven to nine hours of sleep. Research has shown this is especially apparent in children and young to middle-aged adults. And finally, too little sleep can put you at an increased risk of other chronic conditions, such as cardiovascular disease and diabetes, or reduce your ability to manage a condition that you may already have. We discussed that there is a nightly dip in your blood pressure that occurs when you sleep. That appears to be good for cardiovascular health. Insufficient sleep time and untreated sleep disorders can cause a failure to experience this normal dip in blood pressure. People with sleep apnea have been found to be at an increased risk for several cardiovascular diseases, such as hypertension or high blood pressure, stroke, coronary heart disease, and cardiac arrhythmias. Research has also shown a link between insufficient sleep and an increased risk for developing type 2 diabetes. Sleep deprivation has been linked with poor regulation of blood sugars, and sleep duration and the quality of sleep have both been shown to be predictors for hemoglobin A1C levels, which is a vital marker for blood sugar control. And finally, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention states that sleep deprivation is also associated with injuries, poor quality of life and well-being, increased health care costs, and lost work productivity. Here we have an illustra illustration representing the possible mechanisms that decreased levels of sleep have on increasing the chances of developing obesity. As you can see, sleep deprivation can cause a decrease in the hormone lepitin and an increase in the hormone ghrelin, which in turn can cause feelings of increased hunger. Increased hunger can obviously lead to an increased caloric intake, eventually re resulting in obesity. Sleep deprivation can lead to an increased opportunity to eat as Simply put, you're awake more. This obviously can lead to an increased caloric intake as well, eventually resulting in obesity. Next, sleep deprivation can alter your body's internal thermal regulation. This, in turn, can result in reduced energy expenditure. As weight gain is determined by calories in versus calories out, this too can lead to obesity. Finally, sleep deprivation can lead to increased fatigue, which also can result in reduced energy expenditures and eventually obesity. Now that you have the facts, let's talk about some suggestions for a good night's sleep. On the left column, we have suggestions for what to do or what to increase. The right column shows behaviors to avoid or reduce. Let's start with the left. Do stick with a consistent schedule. The National Sleep Foundation recommends going to bed and waking at the same time each night or close to it to keep your body's clock on a consistent schedule. And yes, this includes the weekends. Next, do practice a relaxing bedtime ritual. A relaxing routine activity before bed can help separate your sleep time from activities that can cause excitement, stress, or anxiety, all of which can make it more difficult to fall asleep, reach deep sleep, or remain asleep. This brings us to our next point, which is wind down. Your body needs to shift into sleep mode. So including a calming activity such as reading or meditation to start your bedtime routine. Next, exercise daily. We just saw how a lack of sleep can affect physical activity levels, but it works the other way around as well. Next, do evaluate your room, mattress, and pillows. Keep your bedroom quiet. 
which can include your partner snoring, dark and at a cool, comfortable temperature, such as 67 to 70 degrees. To keep your room dark, consider using blackout curtains or eye masks. To keep it quiet, you may think about using earplugs, white noise machines, humidifiers, or fans. To make sure that your mattress is comfortable, supportive, and used only for sleeping and not for other activities such as reading, watching TV, or listening to music, so as to strengthen your mind's association between your bed and sleep. Most good quality mattresses have a life expectancy of 9 to 10 years. Keep pillows that are comfortable and attractive so that they are inviting for sleep as well. Now, things you should avoid or limit. First, naps, especially in the afternoon. While power napping may help you get throughout the day, it can also affect your body's ability to fall asleep at bedtime. Reducing the amount of afternoon naps or eliminating even a short nap may help. Next, avoid alcohol and cigarettes in general and avoid heavy meals in the evening. These can all disrupt your sleep. Large meals, especially those that are spicy, can cause indigestion and other discomforts that can make it hard to sleep. Try to avoid eating at least two to three hours before bedtime. Additionally, keep in mind that while caffeine and other stimulants may temporarily help to overcome the effects of sleep deprivation, they cannot do so for extended periods of time. Third, remove the gadgets. Electronics such as cell phones, computers, or televisions all have lights that may activate the brain in a way that keeps it stimulated after finishing your use. Try to avoid electronics before bed or in the middle of the night if you have trouble sleeping. And finally, try to reduce the stresses in your life as much as possible, which can make it difficult to fall asleep or leave you tossing and turning throughout the night with worry or anxiety. Dr. Donna Arand, Clinical Director of the Sleep Disorder Center at Kettering Medical Center in Dayton, Ohio, stated, stress shifts the brain and body into fifth gear. You need to be a neutral to fall asleep. So far, we've spent this presentation learning about the importance of practicing healthy sleep habits. However, if sleep problems persist or interfere with how you feel or function throughout the day, you should talk to your doctor immediately who may recommend evaluation and treatment. Before you meet with your doctor, keep a diary of your sleep habits for about 10 days, which you can then discuss at your appointment. In the sleep diary, include when you go to bed, go to sleep, wake up, get out of bed, take naps, exercise, consume alcohol, and consume caffeine. As a Take Charge Live Well tip, try using the My Journal feature in the Healthways Wellbeing Connect website as your diary. So if you do suffer from a sleep disorder, you're not alone. As previously mentioned, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, approximately 70 million Americans suffer from chronic sleep problems. Here we will go over, very briefly, four common sleep disorders. First, insomnia, which is an inability to fall asleep or to maintain sleep. This can come in the form of early morning awakening and or excessive daytime sleepiness as well. Next is narcolepsy, which is characterized by excessive daytime sleepiness, including episodes of irresistible sleepiness combined with sudden muscle weakness. This can be provoked by surprise or the onset of strong emotions. Episodes such as these have been called sleep attacks and may occur in unusual circumstances for sleep, such as walking. Restless leg syndrome, or RLS, can include a creeping sensation, which oftentimes originates in the lower legs. It can also be associated with aches, pains, and consistent twitching throughout the legs, which can cause difficulty of falling asleep. And finally, is sleep apnea. All of us know someone who snores, maybe even ourselves. This may actually be a sign of something bigger than just an annoying habit. People with sleep apnea typically make frequent snorting noises or gasps which can momentarily interrupt their sleep. Due to these common sleep interruptions, those who suffer from sleep apnea may experience excessive daytime sleepiness. If you have not been diagnosed with a sleep disorder but think you may have some of the symptoms of one of these, it's important that you discuss your symptoms with your doctor as soon as possible. Whether you have been diagnosed and are managing a sleep disorder or are simply looking to improve a healthy sleep habit or two, the Take Charge Live Well program offers a variety of resources to help. Two primary categories of support include telephonic health coaching and web resources. Each of these can provide the help and support that you need to modify your daily lifestyle habits that are related to a good night's sleep. 
Telephonic health coaching includes working with a trained health coach who provides personalized support to help lower your risk for disease, manage your current conditions, and change behaviors. A health coach can help you set and keep you on track to achieve your health goals. Each coaching program will be created and personalized on your unique needs and goals. You do not need to have a pre-existing condition to participate in this voluntary program. To get started, please call 1-866-556-2288 and select option 2 for wellness coaching. The web resources available include healthy behavior trackers, articles, videos, a journal feature, and more, all of which are housed in your HealthWave Wellbeing Connect website. These resources are available to eligible members covered under the state medical plan after completing a well-being assessment and well-being plan. To access your account, select the HealthWave website button from ohio.gov forward slash TCLW. Additional web resources can be found on the Take Charge LiveWell website, including recorded and live webinars, a calendar of upcoming wellness events, and other suggested wellness resources. For more details on the online or coaching program, please refer to the program guide or the program overview webinar, both of which can be found at ohio.gov forward slash TCLW. Here is a shot of the Take Charge Liberal website, ohio.gov slash TCLW. Here you can see the buttons where you can access the HealthWave Wellbeing Connect website, the program guide, which includes step-by-step -step instructions for Wellbeing Connect, and a link for live and recorded wellness webinars such as this. Once you're signed into the Wellbeing Connect website, you can search the resources and tools function for sleep articles, videos, and more. While in resources and tools, you can also access your journal feature. For assistance in setting up or using healthy behavior trackers, such as a physical activity tracker, healthy eating tracker, or a personal tracker, visit the Help button at the top of the page. Here we have listed several helpful resources for sleep. I'm going to leave the screen up for a few seconds should you want to take down any of this information. I would like to point out that the last bullet in particular, which is the Ohio Employee Assistance Program. As we have learned, stress can play a large role in sleep deprivation, and the Ohio EAP can help with managing stressors in your life. Dr. Dilakar Balachandran, Director of the Sleep Center at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, puts it best. He says, we live in a 24-7 society and everyone has two jobs and is bombarded with media. So sleep seems expendable, but proper sleep is a fundamental component of a healthy lifestyle. And this concludes our presentation for today. We thank you for joining us, and if you have any questions, please visit ohio.gov forward slash TCLW or call 1-866-556-2288 for questions regarding the Take Charge Workout Program or to begin health coaching.